Hello! Welcome back to Drupal Fever. This is the third and final part in our Pudi final guide. On this final phase, we will go over uploading and downloading files using only Pudi. Of course, you can do this using a FTP client, but with Pudi, you will be able to do this much faster and in a more secure way. Here is how it's done. You begin by clicking on the Start button. You right-click on Computer and select Properties. Now you click on Advanced System Settings. On the Advanced tab, you click on the Environment Variables button. Now you go to the System Variables window. You scroll down and select the Path Variable and click on the Edit button. Here you go to the end of the variable field and we are going to add the path to PuTTY. The easiest way to find out where PuTTY was installed is by going to the Start button and right clicking on the PuTTY shortcut. Now select Properties. Here on the Shortcut tab you need to go to the Target field. We only need the path to where PuTTY was installed. We don't need the name of the executable so we have to remove it. Now we have to select everything, including the quotes, and copy. Here, remember to click on the cancel button. We don't want to save any change we have made to the shortcut. Now we need to put a semicolon here and paste the path to where PuTTY was installed. Now click on the OK button. OK again. OK again. Now close this window. Now press the Windows key plus R. To open the Run dialog box, type CMD and click on the OK button to open the command prompt. Now to verify that the change we have made to the global variables is actually working, we should type in capital letters SET and press Enter. This command will output all the Windows global variables. Here is the path global variable and at the very end we should see the path to PuTTY. Here it is. Now I'm going to give a demonstration on how to upload and download files with PuTTY. Let's open the profile that we have created on our last video. I will open up the folder where our web files are located. Depending on how your web server is configured, this path may be a little different. Let's list the content of my website. And I'm going to copy the robots.txt file. But for this I need to figure out the absolute path to this file. I will use a Linux command called pwd, path to working directory. And here is the path that I need to copy. Let's exit. And this is the full command that I need to use to download the robots.txt file from my web server into my desktop. We are going to use a PuTTY application here that is the equivalent to a command in Linux, the SCP command, secure copy command. And PuTTY is PSCP. This application will allow us to upload and download files. This is how we use it. We type PSCP space. We put now our SSH username at now the IP address of your website or the domain name of your website. Now colon and then the absolute path to the file we want to copy. In our case, we are going to copy the robots.txt file. After that, you put a space and then the full path to the location where you want this file to be copied to. I decided to copy this file to the desktop. Now you press enter. And here, since we are using PSCP for the first time to access this web server, it is showing us this security alert, but it's nothing to worry about. Just 
type Y and press enter. And here it's showing that the download process is finished and ran to 100% here. And now let's go to our desktop. Here it is. The robots.txt file was downloaded from our website and it's now here on our desktop. Now let's do another test. Let's create another text file. Let's call this file test. Um, let's open the file and type something unique to this file, like hello world. Now let's close, save, and let's open again our terminal window. We are using the same PSCP command again, but now we are switching the two file paths. Now we put first the path to the file in Windows and at the end we do the same thing that we did before. We put the SSH username at the IP address or the website domain name, column, and the absolute path to the location that we want the file that we are uploading to go to. Okay, it went to 100%, so let's open PuTTY again and let's open our profile. Now let's go back to the location where our web files are. Now let's list the files and there it is test.txt. Just to show you that this is the same file, let's open this text file with vi. And there it is, hello world. Now let's exit by pressing escape, column, Q and enter. Now just to keep things clean, let's remove the file that we just uploaded using the rm command. Now let's go back to the terminal. Now I need to show you some of the properties to PSCP that you should know. Uh, let's go back here. Now type dash v and press enter and it will re-upload the same file but now in verboso mode, which means that PuTTY is going to show you each of the tasks that it's executing in the process of uploading the file. The dash V property can be very useful if you are having problems uploading files and you want to troubleshoot it. Now let's list the content of the folder again. And as you can see, the file was uploaded just like before. Now let's remove the file again. Let's go back to the terminal and I'll show you another property. This one is very useful, which is the dash capital C. This property will tell PSCP to compress the files before uploading them and then decompress the files once the files are there. Of course, since we are uploading a single file, that makes no difference. Actually, it makes the process a little slower. The file was uploaded like before. Now the dash P property may not be very useful, but it's good to know. If you don't use this property, PSCP will connect via SSH to the default port, which is 22. But sometimes your web server is configured to use a different SSH port like for example 1234 and that's how you tell PSCP to use an alternate SSH port. Now I will show you a final example. Let's go back to the desktop and create a second text file. Let's call this text file test2 and let's rename the first file test1. Now let's create a folder. Let's call this folder Temp. Now we need to copy the two text files into this folder. Here they are. 
And what we are going to do here is to copy more than one file at once using PSCP. Now, this temp folder doesn't have subfolders, but if you are planning on uploading a bunch of files with folders and subfolders, you should use the dash R property, which tells PSCP to recursively go into any subfolder and upload everything. And in our example, we just need PSCP to go into the temp folder and upload everything that was in there. And we want all the files to be uploaded to the root of our website. Here it is. The file test one and test two were both uploaded. And let me list the content of our website. And there it is. The original test file that I uploaded before and the two test files that I just uploaded right now. Now let's remove all of them. Okay, they're gone and we are done. Please subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. This is Elias Barbosa. Thanks for watching.